Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of Extreme Reloading. In this episode, on this season of bullets, we're going to be looking at bullet sorting. Now that may sound like, boy, that's it? Bullet sorting. Yeah, well, bullet sorting. So there's lots of ways that we can sort bullets. And what I'm driving at is there are numerous ways that we can describe or characterize a bullet by measurements. And no particular or single measurement will ever capture the essence of a given bullet. That's why we need to make numerous different types of measurements, especially if we're interested in discerning somewhat subtle differences between one bullet and another. And of course, that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in looking at, again, why one particular 168 grain bullet performs so darn well in my Ruger precision rifle, whereas a bunch of other 168 grain bullets really don't do that well. Even if I have gone through, and I've done this in the past, and tailored uh, a powder charge load to those bullets. Some bullets just seem to, and indeed do, perform better than others. So some of the ways that we can measure uh, to describe those bullets, uh, number one is very simple, very fast, and it is the weight of that bullet itself. I know on the outside of the box it tells us the weight, but if you've ever taken a little bit of time to individually weigh what you're really getting, you'll find out that there is variability. This is absolutely normal in the world of manufacturing and creating things. Uh, there's going to be some tolerances, plus or minus this, plus or minus that, some variability in that end product. What I was interested in when I first started doing this some years ago, well, is just how much variability is in the weight of these bullets, and does the variability really matter? Remember, we're always driving toward that consistency equals accuracy. So I have been weight sorting my precision rifle bullets uh, and I will load on a particular day for a particular session. I'll load maybe all 168.1 grain bullets. Uh, and then when I fire, I'm firing all those much more consistent loads because I have a little bit more consistent bullet weight. Well, does it really make a difference? We're going to test that out. Uh, later on. But certainly the weight of the bullet is an important and very easy measurement, kind of a low-hanging fruit. And I've actually already completed 200, uh, weighing 200 bullets for both the um, 168 grain Sierra tipped Match King and another 200 bullets for the Barnes 69 grain Match Burner. Uh, and they're pretty uh, similar in the fact that their standard deviation of the weights is about one-tenth of a grain in both cases. Actually, um, the Barnes bullets were slightly more consistent, but not um, terribly so. And what was interesting, though, is when we histogram or chart the distribution of those weights, we see... Uh, that the Sierra tipped match kings resemble fairly closely a bell-shaped or normal bell-shaped curve. When we look at a histogram for the 69 grain uh, match burners, we see a far more uh, elongated tail on the left side, if you notice that, uh, and a more pronounced leaning toward the right. So not a normal bell-shaped curve. And that, of course, is the result of weighing 200 of those bullets. I had to go, obviously, into a couple of boxes. So different lots of bullets and, and all that. So I think that was a pretty good uh, test. Now, another way that we can measure our bullets to describe them and understand them a little bit better uh, is by actually making some measurements. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can make those measurements. 
One is simply the overall length from the tip or the meplat of that bullet to the base. Another way uh, is from the ogive to the base. And we're going to be doing both of those. Uh, and actually I'll be doing three different measurements, two of those ogive to base, but I'll be flipping the bullet uh, as part of that process. And I'll explain what that's all about in just a little while, as it's going to help us calculate the bearing surface length of those bullets. And of course, we can also describe those bullets by the shape of the ogive, and that shape being generally secant, tangent, or a hybrid of those two. All right, let's go ahead and get started on measuring these uh, bullets. Now, what I'm doing, of course, I want to start by zeroing this uh, digital caliper. And I'm going to begin by doing overall length. One point three two three. Now, what's interesting is it it's not really that easy to get a precise measurement of overall length because the meplats are not really as uniform as you might think they are. Plus, there of course is some variability between one bullet and the next. One thing that I like to do when I'm making these measurements is try to assert an even pressure on that thumb wheel so that I'm not um, distorting the measurements uh, myself. 1.318 now the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be measuring the ogive to base using this Hornady bullet comparator uh, kit. It assembles pretty darn easily. I've got the 30 cal insert in there right now. And there are other inserts with this kit as well. We've got a 26 cal uh, for your 6.5 uh, 28 for my 7 millimeters, and what I'm looking for here is the 22 caliber 224. I'll be using that one uh, as well today. Installation on the digital caliper is pretty darn easy. Again, I'm going to start, turn the machine on, I'm going to get a nice zero on it, and I'm going to open those jaws, and I'm going to place that Hornady comparator uh, on that jaw, very loosely fitted to start with, and then I'm going to close it up a little bit and just start turning down that uh, thumb wheel. Make it initially, I just make it snug enough so it doesn't fall off. Then I'm going to go ahead and close up those jaws and allow it to square up along that left side. Now I'll tighten it down so it doesn't move. And you'll see there it's reading 1.002 inches. It should be exactly, precisely 1.00000 inches. So all I need to do here is to zero it, and now all of my measurements will be uh, accurate as expected. Now I'm going to be measuring the ogive to base length. So there's the base on the left side. The ogive uh, is the point where that insert, that bullet comparator tool, uh, is fitted uh, with that bullet itself. And so again, a 308 caliber, so we're looking at that ogive point, or the point at which that bullet reaches, in this case, reaches the bore diameter. Now I'm flipping that around, and I'm measuring uh, hitting the ogive again, but from the base side, so just off of that boat tail. And that will help us to determine the um, bearing surface length. And I'm scribing a line on that bullet using my Sharpie. And now what I have is I have these two lines based on that bullet comparator. 
And if I measure the distance between those two lines, that is effectively the bearing surface length. And really, just on the inside of those lines will be that bearing surface uh, length. I'm getting a 0.44441 uh, on this individual bullet. But what's interesting is I can also calculate the bearing surface length with the measurements I've already made. And those measurements might be somewhat different than my eyeballing of those bearing surface lengths. Now I'm not going to pretend that this measurement, my measurements of bearing surface length are going to be really absolute, precise, 100% accurate. There's a fair amount of, of eyeballing and estimation uh, involved in that process, even the thickness of that, of that Sharpie pen marker, all that good stuff like this. And what's interesting, by the way, is that Berger bullets gives a lot of these measurements for all of their different bullets, including the bearing surface length. Well, I've got quite a number of bullets to get through, and uh, I'm going to make a bunch of these measurements that we just talked about for both these 308 Sierra tipped match kings. Uh, the other 308 bullets uh, in our suite today as well as the 22 or 224 bullets. So I'm going to get busy and I'll be right back.